driverless valet parking, 3D printed hearts, mixed reality medical training, satellite smartphones and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. Mighty Fly unveiled its new delivery electric VTOL, the Cento. This electric cargo aircraft has a capacity of 100 pounds or 45 kilograms, can fly at a max speed of 150 miles per hour with a 600 mile range. It has eight vertical lift fans, one forward propulsion propeller, and when fully loaded, the Cento weighs 355 pounds or 161 kilograms. It is small enough so that the space needed for ground transfer stations can simply be two car spots in an existing parking lot. In other EV toll news, Blade Air Mobility and Beta Technologies announced the successful test flight of Beta's Alia 250 EV toll, which has one tenth the noise profile of a standard helicopter. The test was conducted at Westchester County Airport in New York. In an interview, Blade CEO Rob Wiesenthal said, This demonstration is a big milestone in our transition from helicopters to electric vertical aircraft, and we are pleased that our partners at Beta have designed the right aircraft with the requisite range, capacity and noise profile for use in our key markets, including our home base of New York City. The trend of drone deliveries continues to develop all over the world, as Swoop Aero recently obtained approval to operate beyond visual line-of-sight flights in New Zealand. This is part of an initiative to develop the country's first integrated drone logistics network in partnership with Health New Zealand. The approvals granted by New Zealand's Civil Aviation Authority enable Swoop Aero to conduct drone operations remotely, with a single remote pilot operating up to five aircraft at a time. The Spanish Army has been testing a hybrid drone system during urban environment exercises. The Rooster drone, designed by Robotican, is capable of both rolling on the floor and flying in the air, and was used to scan upper floors and buildings, relaying real-time intelligence data to forces elsewhere in the training space. Lots of self-driving vehicle news this week. Starting off, Motional announced that their robo-taxi service will now begin nighttime drives in Las Vegas. This marks an expansion to their existing daytime service, which was launched in August last year. In addition to that, the company has rolled out other new features, allowing passengers to interact with the cars in various ways, like unlocking the doors with their phones, or controlling the vehicle's temperature. Crews have also been expanding their self-driving taxi service and recently celebrated passing over 1 million miles of completely driverless rides. Mo El Shanawi, Executive Vice President of Engineering, explains, Just about every mile we've logged has been packed with complex scenarios that have set crews up for rapid scale, and all of these miles were collected with our all-electric renewable-powered fleet, offsetting a total of 684 metric tonnes of CO2 emissions over the course of these million miles. The dense, often chaotic streets of San Francisco have about 19,000 people per mile and give our fleet mountains of information-rich data to learn from. A partnership between Bosch, APCOA, Mercedes-Benz and Stuttgart Airport have developed what they claim is the world's first driverless airport parking service. It's designed so all the driver needs to do is park in a designated drop-off area and get out. The infrastructure installed by Bosch then takes over and automatically finds a vacant space and parks in it. This service is currently available in Stuttgart Airport's P6 garage. And in other car-related automation news, Discount Tire has been piloting RoboTire's automated tire changing system at another location, this time in Arlington, Texas. The Robo Tire is designed for fleets, dealerships and auto repair service providers and drastically speeds up the process of changing tires, claiming it can change all four tires within 15 minutes. Moving over to farming now, French robotics company Merapi have designed the Centive Autonomous Farming Bot. It can roll around inside crop fields without damaging them thanks to its open-spoked wheels and has front and down facing cameras to monitor everything. The robot works autonomously inside a pre-selected area and combines with an AI vision system which can spot things like weeds, diseases and growing progress. Ethicon recently announced the first patient to successfully have kidney stones removed using their Monarch robotic assistant, which took place at UCI Health, the clinical enterprise of the University of California, Irvine. This clinical study is the first in the world to research and demonstrate the potential for improved navigation, access, clearance and control in mini PCNL procedures using the Monarch platform for urology, said Dr. Jamie Landman, chair of the UCI School of Medicine Department of Urology. 
In addition to potentially helping urologists achieve stone-free patients in a single procedure, this approach could help reduce the need for retreatment after kidney stone removal and decrease risks and complication rates. Continuing with the health sector, Moreland Health has teamed up with GigXR to train their staff using lifelike mixed reality experiences. The module creates various scenarios in order to provide basic life support training where multiple team members can all view and interact with scenes together in person or remotely. In other news, the long-awaited sequel to Sony's virtual reality system was recently announced. PSVR 2 builds upon the previous version with new features such as headset-based haptic feedback, eye tracking, new and improved sense controllers and 3D audio. The company also promises improved ergonomics for a more comfortable headset wearing experience. It's now available to order from $549 and users will have a catalogue of over 30 games available at launch. A team of researchers led by Vivek Nair carried out a study on virtual reality users and found that it is easy to uniquely identify them using head and hand motion data, revealing a tracking method which is on par with facial and fingerprint recognition. In this study, we show that a large number of real VR users can be uniquely and reliably identified across multiple sessions using just their head and hand motion relative to virtual objects. After training a classification model on 5 minutes of data per person, a user can be uniquely identified amongst the entire pool of 50,000 plus with 94.33% accuracy from 100 seconds of motion and with 73.2% accuracy from just 10 seconds of motion. VR enthusiast and Twitch streamer Shoda VR recently tweeted about a DIY hack he did to the Oculus Quest headset. By adding extra LEDs that mimic the colours from the edges of the internal displays, it creates a fake super-wide FOV, which Shoda says is phenomenal and a game-changer. He is now working on a version for the Valve Index. Check out the link to the Twitter thread for more info. Samsung has successfully simulated non-terrestrial network modem technology on the company's Exynos modem 5300 in preparation for inclusion in new smartphone releases. This technology will allow two-way text messaging and image video sharing using satellites as communications intermediaries. NTN is a communications technology that uses satellites and other non-terrestrial vehicles to bring connectivity to regions that were previously unreachable by terrestrial networks, whether over mountains, across deserts or in the middle of the ocean. It will also be critical in assuring operability in disaster areas and powering future urban air mobility UAM such as unmanned aircraft and flying cars. In other electronics news, Purism recently released a lap dock for the Librem 5 phone. Users can now take full advantage of PureOS convergence, meaning you can plug the Librem 5 phone into the dock and run full desktop Linux applications. The kit is for sale at $339 and features a 1080p touchscreen that can flip around turning the device into a tablet. MIT researchers have created 3D printed replicas of patients' hearts. The system uses patient scan data to recreate models of the hearts and then prints them out with soft polymer materials. They can then add a pumping feature to accurately replicate the pressure and movement of each specific heart. This allows doctors to physically try out various kinds of replacement valves on the printed heart in order to see which treatments will respond best to a specific patient, all before needing to do any surgery. Fashion brand Zellerfeld recently opened the public beta of its 3D printed shoe platform. The site has 15 different shoe designs available and people can pre-order to enter the line. Each shoe is 3D printed specifically for each customer, with a smartphone app being required to scan their feet before manufacturing. Zellerfeld say their footwear has no glue, seams or weak points and is made from fully recyclable material. A team of researchers led by Kai Melder have come up with a method of using holographic ultrasound to form whole 3D objects almost instantly. Here, we realise the generation of compact holographic ultrasound fields and demonstrate the one-step assembly of matter using acoustic forces. We combine multiple holographic fields that drive the contactless assembly of solid microparticles, hydrogel beads and biological cells inside standard labware. This approach handles matter with positive acoustic contrast and does not require opposing waves, supporting surfaces or scaffolds. In order to make long-term presence on the moon viable, people will need an abundant supply of electricity. 
That's why Blue Origin have developed a system called Blue Alchemist, which will take moon dust and turn it into working solar cells. Using regolith simulants, our reactor produces iron, silicon and aluminum through molten regolith electrolysis, in which an electrical current separates those elements from the oxygen to which they are bound. Oxygen for propulsion and life support is a byproduct. Our process purifies silicon to more than 99.99%. This level of purity is required to make efficient solar cells. While typical silicon purification methods on Earth use large amounts of toxic and explosive chemicals, our process uses just sunlight and the silicon from our reactor. And staying in the realm of electricity, Saku claims to be the first company to 3D print fully functional batteries in custom shapes and sizes, using a fully dry process. The Cavian platform they have developed, they say, enables world-class energy and power densities and can print lithium-ion, lithium-metal and solid-state batteries all at high-volume production speeds. Eero3D on YouTube uploaded a video showing a technique called selective powder deposition, which 3D prints sand moulds for metal casting. The process takes two different types of sand, first shell sand for creating the mould, and regular sand which acts as support material. You then bake it at around 180 degrees Celsius for two hours to bond the shell sand together. After that, you can pour out the regular sand, and you're left with a mold which you can pour molten metal directly into. In his experiment, Iro 3 d made some pretty complex stainless steel parts using the technique. And rounding off this week's manufacturing section with this story, sporting goods giant Wilson showed off a 3D printed airless basketball prototype, demonstrating how far the technology has progressed in recent years. The company says that the ball is truly playable and almost fits the performance specifications for regulation basketballs in size, weight and bounce. And finally, IEEE Spectrum recently got some time with the MNT pocket reform and the impressions were positive. This 7-inch mini computer will run on NXP's IMX8 M Plus ARM processor clocked at 1.8 GHz. There's 8 GB of RAM, onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as well as optional cellular modems coming too. The reviewer was particularly impressed by the mechanical keyboard, which uses Kyle Chalk White low-profile switches and custom backlit keycaps. The whole thing is encased in machined aluminium, with most surfaces being user-replaceable. Pre-orders are expected to open on crowd supply in the next few weeks, with pricing to be upwards of $900. Check out the links for more information. Thanks for watching. That's it for this week. Stay up to date with the latest technology trends by subscribing to this channel or visit mosfet.net for more news and feeds.